I'm going to teach you a new exercise called Mr. Freeze. In this exercise, we'll use two new stroke types. I hope you enjoy. Up until now, in all of our exercises, we've been using rebound strokes that start and end in the same place. They can start high and end high, start medium and end medium, or start low and end low. In this exercise, we'll have two new stroke types that start and end in different places. First is the downstroke. It starts high and ends low. Next is the upstroke. It starts low and ends high. So here's what the three stroke types look like. The first stroke type, a downstroke, starts high and ends low. For this exercise, we're going to start at 9 inches and end at set position. It looks like this. You'll hear that it sounds just like a rebound stroke. The difference is it doesn't rebound back to the starting position. In this exercise, we also have some rebound strokes that start low and end low. We're going to start and end these strokes at 3 inches, the piano dynamic. We also have some upstrokes. The upstrokes are going to start at 3 inches and end at 9 inches so that you're ready to play the next accent. We'll start by pointing out a few important markings in the music. First, you'll see the accents. Beat one of each measure is accented, meaning that these notes will be emphasized in comparison to the notes around them. You'll also notice that there are a few time signature changes. We begin in 4-4 four, four time, then we change to 3-4 three, time, 3 beats per measure, then we change to 2-4 two, time, 2 beats per measure. Finally, you'll notice there's a repeat sign at the end, meaning when we get here, we'll go all the way back to the beginning and do the same exercise again with the left hand. Next, I'll point out the different stroke types and where they fall in the exercise. We determine what stroke type to use based on the volume of the note we're playing, but also the volume of the note that comes after it. For instance, the first note of the exercise should start loud because it's an accent, but the note after it is not accented, so it should be soft. Therefore, we'll use a downstroke that starts high and ends low. The next note is soft because it's not accented, and the note after it is also soft. Therefore, we'll use a rebound stroke that's very small. We'll call it a tap. Then we have another tap on beat three, and on beat four, we have a note that's supposed to sound soft, but the note after it needs to sound loud. Therefore, we'll use an upstroke that starts soft and ends ready to play the next accent. If I draw in the rest of the stroke types in the exercise, it looks like this. The first note is a downstroke. It starts high and ends low. Beat 2 and beat 3 are both rebound strokes that start low and end low. For the purpose of this exercise, we'll call them taps. Tap, tap. The beat 4 note is also a low note. It starts low, but it ends high to be ready to play the next accent. Tap. If I put the first measure together, it sounds like this. You'll see that after the fourth note, my stick is ready to play the next accent. The second measure is the same as the first. One, two, three, four. Now we're changing the time signature to three, four time, so there's only one rebound stroke in between the downstroke and the upstroke. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
Now again, we're changing the time signature, this time to two four time. We're taking away the rebound stroke in between the downstroke and the upstroke. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. That's the first half of the exercise. Next, you would play the entire thing with the left hand. Remember that the primary hinge we're using to move our stick is our wrist. Make sure when you lift and you play any note, you're mainly moving from your wrist. Also, make sure that you're holding the stick with your fulcrum, your thumb and your index finger, and you're touching the stick with your back three fingers. If your back three fingers aren't touching the stick, then the stick won't stop when you try to play a downstroke. If I take my fingers off, you'll see that the stick just kind of rebounds back close to starting position. If I keep my fingers touching the stick, when my hand stops, the stick stops. One, two, ready, go. Hey guys, don't forget that you can reach out to me if you ever need help with anything. You can leave a comment on this video, or you can reach out through Google Classroom or email. You can also follow Keller Central Percussion on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. When you're practicing, don't forget to use a metronome. Start slow and make little 5 BPM adjustments each day. Before you know it, you'll be playing these exercises faster than you thought you could. If you're struggling, don't give up. Just remember, slow it down write it down, or break it down. See you guys later.